Hey guys, there's a lot to be learned from uh, AM broadcast antennas. A lot of it can uh, carry over into uh, ham radio and uh, what we learn about uh, antennas, especially directional antennas. Behind me here is a three element vertical uh, array antenna for AM broadcast radio. I'm in Newport News, Virginia. This is WGH, which is 1310 kilohertz and, uh, and their antenna system. I'm gonna take a look around and we're gonna talk about three element vertical phased array antennas. We're gonna look at what we can learn from this and possibly carry over into ham radio antennas. Stick around. The site I'm at, WGH, 1310 kilohertz in Newport News, Virginia. The station was founded in 1928. It's a historic station. It's the only station in the state of Virginia that still has the three iconic uh, call sign, uh, the three letter call sign WGH, which means the world's greatest harbor. Uh, the antenna site was moved here in 1968, and this is where this, uh, this radio station has been uh, broadcasting with this directional antenna since. You know, AM broadcasting had a big problem in the early days, but usually only at night. During the day, the AM signals had limited range, but at night they could travel across the country. The solution to this was directional antennas and how WGH came to be with a three-element vertical directional antenna. You know, WGH is what's called, the antenna is a DA2 antenna, which means it's directional and has two different, basically, uh levels of power one for the day and one for the night the daytime power is 20,000 watts and the uh, nighttime power is 5,000 watts um, basically the daytime is a ground wave and uh, with that 20,000 watts it covers the uh, metropolitan area of Norfolk Virginia Beach Newport News Hampton Portsmouth it's the what's called the uh, greater Hampton Roads area this this antenna is set up uh, pretty neat I took a look at the FCC uh, license and the info there for that and you can see in its uh, tower array orientation that it's spaced basically a quarter wave apart or 90 degrees uh, uh, spacing apart electrically. Um, what's really cool about this, if you look at the height of the antenna, well, you do the math, yeah, they're quarter wave vertical antennas, three of them. And uh, that's pretty cool. What these antennas use, though, is a pretty elaborate phasing system, uh, a little bit pretty much more than what we would use in ham radio, but an but electronic uh, phasing system. All three of these antennas are driven elements, and it is being directed, and the uh, beam direction is being done with the setup of the antenna, but also with the phasing system within it. These uh, antennas, the, the pattern for the antennas itself, as you can see, go across the uh, metropolitan area and then somewhat out to sea. Um, I bet there's some guys uh, probably over in um, in the Bermuda that have picked this uh, this station up at night a few times, a little uh, doing some de-axing, as it's pretty much beamed straight out and over the Atlantic Ocean in that direction for sure. Um, this antenna, for what it's worth, is um, like I said, it's all radiating. Each one of these mass, these electronic mass are radiating and they come down to a non-conductive uh, support at the base this is the feed point so as you can see the feed point itself um, is not touching the ground and below it are a nice set of radials for each antenna each antenna has its own set of radials that are buried about six to eight inches below the ground about 120 wires for each antenna and uh, they're in a 360 degree pattern around it the antenna itself the mast at each point um, it, where it's connected, has a copper jump, jumpers at the joint to keep it and to, to assure that this thing is electrically uh, connected from top to bottom and, and working. Now this is a linear array, and uh, it, so using the, uh, the phasing system in a linear array. There's also, uh, and we see this in ham radio, a planar array, and this is what we use in ham radio, let's say a four element uh, vertical array system. With these, you can switch the, the actual phasing system itself. Let's just switch from basically, let's say, east to west and north to south between the two and two. And, and they are directional uh, in, in each in two ways. We also use this system somewhat similar to this as a two element 
uh, phased array where two driven elements in ham radio, and that's usually like once again bidirectional. A forward and aft, or I'm talking shipbuilding here, I'm sorry, in the front and the back of, of the antenna. So uh, it, it's a two-directional. Somewhat similar to this three-directional. You know, another type of directional antenna, which is kind of similar to this but a little different, is a three-element three vertical uh, parasitic array. And what a parasitic array is, it's like a Yagi. So it has one driven element in the middle, Behind it, it has a reflector, and in front of it, a director. And it pretty much directs these antennas, these parasitic um, vertical elements, direct it in one direction uh, forward of the antenna. So this is a little different than that, but somewhat similar. Those antennas have three different lengths. The reflector is somewhat larger than the driven element, and the director somewhat smaller. Whereas the phased antennas are all the same, same height, and the phasing and the direction being done by electronics. If you're really into these and want to learn more, there's some great books out there. I have a book um, that I, that's from William Orr. And it's a really great bean book. It's an older book. You'll probably have to look for it in Amazon in the used book section. William Orr has some great, great uh, books, uh, other books, books as well, that he uh, kind of co-authored with uh, Stuart Cohen. And uh, these books are are as good as well. I highly advise. They're in my library, and if you can get a hold of these, they're great to have in the library, and you learn a lot about antenna and, and, and uh, antenna theory. If you want to do an extreme deep dive, there's another book I have called AM Tower Antennas by I.S. Mela. This is a pretty good book, too, and it, it kind of, a lot of this will carry over to vertical antennas for uh, ham radio as well. If you're interested in building, maybe not this one, or but something similar, like the parasitic uh, array I talked about earlier. Currently, DX Commander has a kit out, and that's for 40 meters, and uh, it looks pretty interesting and something that might be worth your while if you want to experiment with a beam-type antenna. Anyway, what a thrill it was to get out here and, uh, and, and check out this iconic antenna site. Like I said, I grew up listening to this station, so uh, pretty cool to walk around it and check out and really see how AM broadcast beam antennas work and to really just be up close and actually take a look at it as it as it was in operation. Well, there you go. How cool is that? What a what a great site to be able to walk out here and check it out. Listen, AM radio is uh, in the world and broadcast medium wave radio is it, dying. It's a dying thing, it seems like, and we need to save it and keep it going. And I suggest you, if you're a ham radio operator, hey, tune that dial. Listen to a little bit of AM radio here in the States or around the world. Do some DXing. Medium wave DXing is amazing. It really was my entry level uh, to uh, the radio hobby. Well over 50 years ago, a long time ago when I was a pretty young lad for sure. But uh, there's a lot here, a lot to learn, and uh, there's a lot of great antenna sites out there. Some of them may even be abandoned. Uh, if you're a ham radio operator and you want to learn a little bit of ant about antennas, get out and just kind of look around. Uh, be careful. Uh, like I said, some of these places, uh, you need uh, need some permission to get there, but uh, just be careful and check them out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Walt K4OGO73, my friends.